You're watching the Spirit Food Christian Center Worldwide Webcast, broadcasting live every Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Yes, amen, hallelujah. When Spirit Food comes to you, blessings will flow. Say yes. Words after me, I'm holding in my hand that which I'm holding in my heart, the holy written word of God. The Bible is God speaking to me. I am what the Word of God says I am. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. I have what the Word of God says I possess. I am a believer, not a doubter. Therefore, God's Word is being confirmed in my life with signs following in Jesus name amen hallelujah and amen turn your Bibles please to 1st Peter chapter 2 we'll look at verse 2 1st Peter chapter 2 and we're going to look at verse 2 1st Peter chapter 2 and we'll look at verse 2 and I'm talking about growing up in Christ we who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we are born again ones. We are children of the Most High God. We are ones who are referred to in the scriptures as new creation people. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Now, we're going to read 1 Peter chapter 2, and we'll look at verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. We'll read that. You follow along. Read it yourself as I read it out loud. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. The Holy Ghost wants us to receive this instruction because we can grow up in Christ. Far too many believers have the impression or had the impression, we'll say it that way, that you know what? Now that I'm a Christian, everything is just going to change. No, no, the real you, the spirit you, the part of you that received the Lord, your heart, your spirit man, your spirit man was made new. But you have a responsibility to get your mind renewed with the word and to get your body to cooperate with your heart that has received Christ. Our bodies haven't changed. And since our bodies have not changed, we have to deal with the things that take place in the natural realm from our physical perspective. And so therefore, from our hearts, we yearn and desire to be perfect like our Father is. But until our minds are renewed to think like the Word of God tells us we are now born of His Spirit, we have a responsibility to grow in the word, to study the word, to receive the word, in what fashion? The same way a new baby, a newborn babe, desires its mother's milk. Now, because a newborn babe desires its mother's milk, and you notice that a newborn babe hadn't, doesn't have to go to school to learn how to do its sucking process to receive milk from its mother? Have you noticed that a newborn babe doesn't have to have a degree to come to the place where it appreciates being cuddled and received the nurturing from its mother? Then you as a newborn babe in Christ, there's automatically a desire that is on the inside of you to receive the word of God because your spirit man, the part of you that received Jesus, the part of you that became born again, the new creature, the part of you that is alive unto God and made right with God, that part of you has a hunger 
has a desire to grow up and mature. So as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Let's turn in our Bibles now to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. The Apostle Paul was letting the believers know that he, is, he expected them to mature in their Christ. He expected them to mature in their walk in Christ. He expected the believer to know your nature has been changed. Now, since your nature has been changed from your heart, go ahead and cooperate in your body by allowing your body to obey what's really going on in your heart. When you became a new creature in Christ Jesus, that nature changed in here. But that doesn't mean your body has changed because your body didn't change. So you have a responsibility to be spirit-led rather than to be fleshly ruled. Because your physical body has not changed, He's, and because newborn babies are immature, when a baby grows up into childhood state, you don't take a child and put a child in the same place of responsibility as you would an adult. Why not? Because a child is still growing in its knowledge. A child is still learning concepts. The child is still learning how to function in the world in which they exist. Therefore, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul by the Holy Ghost says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. Now, the word spiritual is referring to born-again believers. But he's referring to born-again believers that have done what 1 Peter chapter 2 says. Born-again believers that have desired the sincere milk of the word that they may grow thereby and come to the place where the word is not just milk to them, but the word becomes meat to them. And Paul knows the difference between milk and meat. I mean, after all, they're food for the person to grow, but when you are receiving the word at the level where you're practicing the word, you're acting on the word, now you can begin to develop muscles and strength and a physique that shows you've been working out. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, that means spiritually mature ones, but as unto carnal. Now, carnal is the word for meat. Have you ever had chili con carne, beans with meat? So when Paul says, I wanted to speak unto you as spiritual people, spiritually mature ones, I, I couldn't do that. I had, to, I had to drop my conversation down to a, a, a more infantile level because you're carnal. That means instead of thinking on the things that are spiritual and desiring to be spiritually mature, you're thinking about things that are fleshly comforting and the flesh, in your flesh dwelleth no good thing. Your flesh has not changed yet. And if you just are carnal, that means you're meat-minded or you're a meathead and you need to be spiritually headed. Amen? Okay. So Paul says in verse 1 of chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, or as unto fleshly or carnal, even as unto what? Babes in Christ. Verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto were you not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. That means I really want to get into some inst more instruction in the word, but the more I start talking about the word at the, le at the next levels, you start, <coughs> I can't take it. <coughs> it's like, why is he talking like that? Paul is saying, I want you to grow up in Christ. Don't get choked out on a little substance or a little meat. Because really, if a baby grows up properly, it wants meat after a while. It's like, okay, I got milk, but I need to know what? I need to get some substance. Have you ever gone to heard of a minister sharing the word of God and that minister, as they're talking, they're talking about, you need to receive Jesus. You need to receive Jesus. You need to receive Jesus. But you're sitting there thinking about, but I already have Jesus. 
I remember when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I remember being born again. I remember being baptized in water. I've got Jesus in my heart. I'm born again. So to hear the minister say, you need Jesus, you need Jesus, you need Jesus, when you already have received Jesus, can be a frustrating thing. A pastor, another name for pastor is shepherd. The purpose of a shepherd is to pastor the sheep, or we could say it this way, is to feed the sheep and to feed the lambs. Therefore, as pastor, my responsibility is to give the word of God in such a way that you consider it as milk and you also can consider it as meat where you can grow thereby. And as you grow in the word, then you're going to act more like the Christ that you have received in your heart. People will begin to see you having answered prayer. It's almost like when you declare a thing, it comes to pass. You start approaching people like Jesus approached people according to the word of God. Someone says, well, I'm sick and I'm hurting. Instead of saying, well, I sure hope something happens. You understand the difference between hope and faith. And you know that the prayer of faith will save the sick. So can I lay my hands upon you? Will you receive the fact, if you're a believer in Christ Jesus, that he took upon himself your sicknesses and your diseases, for by his stripes you were healed? Yes. Well, then when I lay my hands upon you, allow it to be the point of contact, and you receive the healing power of God, and you allow the truth of God's word to be now that which you will repeat, that which will, you will live out, and you declare by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Therefore, sickness and disease, it has to leave my body because my body was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. See, this is conversation that mature believers have. We're told by the word of God. Paul the apostle says, I desire to talk to you like mature ones. But he said, y'all made it where I recognize you just didn't want, you didn't want to meet. And your identification should be from your spiritual life in Christ. Your identification should not be the only thing you have from your driver's license or your ID card in the natural. People say, who are you? Where are you from? And you show a card. But see, as a believer in Christ Jesus, you're supposed to know that you're identified in Christ. And you are a Christian. Everybody put your hand over your heart and say, I'm a Christian. Say these words, because I am a Christian, I'm acknowledging that Christ lives in me. I have the hope of glory and I am a child of the living God and I will live like my Savior and I will talk like my Savior and I'll win in life because I have victory in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. So where you used to be known as one that was only carnally minded, carnal minded or meat minded, you now become spiritually minded. You let love govern your conversation instead of strife and division. Notice what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 there. He said in verse 3, how did he know that there were babies and they weren't able to handle the meat of God's word? He says, for you are yet carnal, which is meat-headed, fleshly-minded, for whereas there is among you envying, among you, referring to believers, Christians, among you believers, there's envying, and strife and divisions. That means you become sectarian. You've divided yourself from other members in the body of Christ, claiming to be loyal to your division rather than loyal to the Savior who born, who made us all new creatures in him through the new birth. When you get to heaven, there is no section for the Baptists. Catholic, Episcopalian, Lutheran. 
and so forth and so on. Ad infinitum. Because in Christ Jesus, we're all one. And we're one body. Yes, we have different members in the body, but there is no sections in heaven where you can divide yourself because we're all one in Christ. There's no black, there's no white, there's no red, there's no yellow. There's just going to be everybody focused on Jesus. He said that there was divisions among them, and he said, are you not carnal and walk as men? Now the word as, I have a number two above it, and it says in the margin of my Bible, the word can be translated there in the original Greek as saying, you walk just like people who aren't even born again. Acting like people who have not experienced the new birth. Now we know this from the Bible, that we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior if you've called upon his name. Therefore, we are one in the Lord. Therefore, let us begin to develop and mature as those who are now aware that we're to be spiritual. And everybody said, amen. Turn in your Bibles, please, to Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah, the 10th chapter, we'll look at verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Somebody, while you're turning there, somebody has said, well, you know, Lord, I'm asking you for these wonderful things to take place in my life. I just need you to just rain down your anointing upon me. And when you bring that anointing upon me, oh, Lord, I'll be free from the things that have been holding me back and keeping me captive. Oh, Lord, just pour out your spirit upon me. Now, you're a believer in Christ Jesus. You've already been born again. You have his spirit on the inside of you. And because you have his spirit on the inside of you, you have to now begin to take your instruction from what the word says, which is referred to as milk and meat. And if you allow the word to be the governing dominion, if you allow the word to be the final authority in how you began to look at things, then you will grow and mature as you walk in the light of the word. Too many believers have said, well, as soon as I feel like God has done this for me, oh, then I know I got it. Well, God doesn't operate in giving you feelings because feelings are engaged in the flesh. And there's nothing wrong with having good feelings, but if God had to give you a good feeling before you accepted Christ, you may not have accepted Christ. Your five senses are not the gauges that tells you that you have a relationship with the Lord. It's your spirit, your heart. And if you allow your heart to be that which you pay attention to, from your heart you serve the Lord. From your heart you are willing to learn and grow. From your heart you allow the spirit of God to communicate to your heart. And from there your head can be educated because your heart by the Holy Ghost will teach your head how to understand the word. In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, the scripture says, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from your, off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke of bondage, a yoke is what a cow, two cows would have or oxen would have on their necks in order for them to plow and bring forth furrows in the ground. And two oxen that have a yoke on are going in the same direction. And if they're tied together, then there's really no independence. It's one following the other. And what the word of God is declaring here is that the enemy, he tries to put you in a yoke whereby you are obeying the will of the devil. And if a person follows the will of the devil, then they're going to do things that are carnal. And you say, well, how does the devil have me yoked up? Well, the devil has in the past had you yoked up spiritually to him because you were once without Christ. And when you were without Christ, you were called in the flesh. 
and everything the devil said to do, you just did it. I mean, even if it didn't make any sense. You thought weekends were made for you to get drunk and high. You thought that having a good time is getting blasted out of your mind when you don't even remember what you did. You thought having a good time was to just gratify the flesh however long it takes for you to have intimate behavior that you feel is so gratifying and it only lasts for a few minutes and then you're like addicted to that behavior without regard to your health, without regard to its consequences to the way you were brought up, without regards to the way you're impacting others who love you, without regard with the person that you're involved with and not concerned about their eternal salvation. Because it's hard to tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus and that he came to save sinners when you're engaging in sin yourself. So at one time, you were what? You were without Christ. And when you were without Christ, you weren't thinking about how to obey the Spirit of God. You were obeying the flesh. And this is the reason why the devil says, aha, I got you, and you're never going to change. But when you receive Christ in your heart, to God be the glory, you became born again. You got a new nature. And now that you have a new nature, you have an opportunity to learn about the power that actually took place when you became born again. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Which means the powerhouse of Christ lives on the inside of you because you're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. If you learn and grow and mature and allow that word on the inside of you to grow and grow and mature, you're going to be so spiritually strong that what will happen you will burst out of the yoke that the devil thought he had on your flesh and was controlling you. Even though you're, you're now born again, but the devil says, well, I'm going to lead you around by your flesh because you're still in a body that hasn't been changed yet. But the power of God on the inside of you, as you mature in the word of God, you began to be, what, more spiritually minded now rather than carnally minded. You began to think about what pleases my heart that is now born again in God. So where the Bible says here that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing, he's not saying from the original Hebrew that you have to wait on God to bring down a hammer to smash the yoke on your shoulders. No, he's saying from the Hebrew that when you are now in Christ, when you are now alive to the word of God, your spirit can grow and mature so much in the Lord that when the devil tries to bring you a yoke of bondage, it doesn't even fit. Smoking cigarettes is still out there in the world, but it has no calling to me. Fornication is still out there in the world, but it has no what? It has no draw to me. Doing those things that were not pleasing to God, I don't have an addiction to those things because of what? Because I've matured and grown up in Christ. And if you read the amplified version of this scripture, it says that the yoke will be completely destroyed because you of Fatness, fatness, F-A-T, means that you are going to be so mature in Christ that your spirit man is more muscled up than your physical man. That when the devil tries to put bondage on you, you're like, no, it doesn't fit anymore, devil. That's no longer my lifestyle, my habit, my desire, my cravings from because I have a new nature and my body is going to obey the man that's within. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, the hidden man of the heart is referring to your spirit man is supposed to be that person that listens to God, obeys God, and then you make your body obey. The book of 
Romans lets us know in Romans, he says that you're now going to be spiritually minded and you're so spiritually minded that you consider your physical body as being crucified in Christ. That you're so spiritually minded that you put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the now appearance that you have is the appearance of one who is alive unto God, born again. And when something happens, how do you react? Well, instead of reacting from the emotional flesh, you react from your spirit that is alive unto God. Turn over in your Bibles, please, to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, you'll see the same language is being used. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12, we're talking about growing up in Christ. When you mature spiritually in the Lord by receiving the word, feeding on the word, allowing God's word to be that which is your diet, as it were, you're going to find yourself talking like Christ, acting like Christ, doing the will of Christ. Verse 12 of Hebrews chapter 5 reads this way. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe or a baby. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. That means after a while, because you get, you get into the word and you act on the word and you allow the word to be your, your meal, your food, your diet, that's your program for feeding yourself. You feed your spirit, man. You allow the word of God to be your spirit food, and then you let your mind get renewed with the word, what happens? You begin to exercise the word in your life. And you come to a place where your spirit man is so mature and yoked up and strengthened that when somebody says, well, you need to react carnally, fleshly, you're like, no, I'm going to go spiritual on you. And when I go spiritual on you, I know how to speak. Instead of cursing you out, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to allow God's word to be that which governs the way I'll respond to that. See, now you're not manipulated by the devil. Now you're not blowing up situations that can be redeemed. Now you're a person who says, I'm going to let God show himself strong in my life. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You know, as a believer, you, can you remember when you first received Christ? Can you remember how, remember how you used to tell everybody to come to the Lord? Do you remember when you used to tell everybody you're born again? Do you remember how you told people, I'm a Christian now? Do you remember you used to say, well, you know, I'm now going to follow the Lord? Over time, sometimes believers, through lack of instruction in the word, almost go back to the way they once acted before they received Christ. And that's the reason why they, they find themselves being so frustrated when they try to go back to sin because you can't live in sin because you got a new nature now. Butterflies don't eat leaves. They suck nectar. But when it was a caterpillar, eating leaves was the program. So now you're born again, suck the nectar. And everyone who agrees with that said in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Say, I'm growing in Christ. I'm living the high life in the Lord. My mind is being renewed by the word of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to take communion now. Those of you who are here, if you don't have a communion element packet, please elevate your hand. We'll gladly pass elements to you. 
Those that are watching by television, get your elements together because we're going to have communion. And this communion is an acknowledgement of our walk with the Lord is sincere. Our commitment to grow in Christ is sincere. As believers in the Lord, we refuse to remain babies. We want to mature and grow in Christ. We come to learn that the more we renew our mind in the word, the more we can offer up our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. So my, my purpose as a believer is to grow up in Christ. Let my speech be governed by love. Let my actions be governed by love. And let the greater one that's on the inside of me have full expression so that I'm filled with all the fullness of God, as the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3. Filled with the fullness of God. That I'm overflowing with the love of God. And love worketh no ill towards its neighbor. Love pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Love never fails and so you won't fail in life you'll grow and you'll prosper and you'll be blessed and you'll be a blessing now heavenly father we lift up these communion elements before you we thank you that the bread represents the body of our lord that was broken for us so that we could have whole and complete lives in christ he was made sin with our sin so that we would be made righteous with his righteousness. Lord, you've justified us in Christ, for you placed upon Jesus all of our sin, all of our sicknesses, all of our diseases. You've placed upon him the poverty, the mental anguish, and all the things that the devil thought he would entrap us with for the rest of our lives. And as we eat of this bread, we do this in remembrance of you, Jesus, remembering that you were broken so that we could have whole lives. Thank you, Jesus. I eat this bread now, signifying a whole life that I will live for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. By his stripes, you were healed, so receive your healing by receiving the testimony of the word. Isaiah 53, 5, 1 Peter 2, 24, Matthew 8, 17, to mention just a few of the scriptures that says, by his stripes you were healed. He was made sin with our sins so that we could be made right with his righteousness. And then the bread, after Jesus had break and gave it to them to eat, he gave the cup and he sipped on the cup and gave it to his disciples and said unto them, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. He said, for as often as you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. What's the purpose of this cup? We could not be called children of God without the blood redemption. His blood was shed for us so that we could have a covenant with Almighty God. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But through his shed blood, our sins have been remitted. We are children of the Most High God. Therefore, let us drink of this cup, remembering all the promises that God has given unto us in Christ Jesus are yes, and in him so be it. Amen. Let's drink together. Blood washed, blood bought, kings and priests, victorious ones in Christ Jesus. You are born again. I want to thank you for tuning in today's lesson. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then I'm going to lead you into a confession of faith. If you say these words after me, you can become a child of the living God. 
In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, the Bible says, But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let us pray these words now, believing these words in our heart, and saying them with our mouth. Dear God, I believe in my heart you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. He was crucified. His blood was shed to wash me clean. And dear God, you raised him from the dead. So I confess with my mouth now, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. You are alive. I believe this in my heart. And because I confess you as my Lord, I am now a child of the living God. Father, thank you for making me your very own. I will live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to thank you for your continual support of this broadcast of Spirit Food Christian Center. We're so grateful for your participation. I'd like to give you an opportunity to participate by our Push Pay app. Text my SFCC to the number 77977. You'll receive further instruction on how to give. We're so grateful and thankful for your continual support and love. Remember, you're helping to make it happen. In Jesus' name, you amen. Are the sun.